Hello everyone, David Giglio here with Olden Engineering and in this video I will discuss how to use Anton's MotorCAD to model and analyze the demagnetization of permanent magnets and the effect that this has on the back EMF and torque performance of an IPM motor as shown here. Go to file for this example, open template, choose the E8 automotive application template, then go to input data, settings, calculation, and set the magnet mesh length to 0 0.5 and set the air gap internal points and air gap surface points to 720. In the materials tab, go to magnet, change the type to N38UH, which has a remnant flux density reference value of 1.26 Tesla at reference temperature 20 degrees Celsius. In the materials database tab, we can select materials used in the model. We will see all the material names for the material in the model, select the magnet name, and then we, we will see the display of the demagnetizing curves for this material. And we see in the dashed line, Maxwell defines the knee on the curve, the point which, which separates the linear region from the nonlinear region. And this point is defined as the deviation from the linear region by 10% or more. So, uh, so from the linear region, as we move away from it, and as, as this slope, this linear slope deviates by 10%, then we enter the nonlinear region. And let's discuss some characteristics of these curves, okay? So these curves are temperature dependent. So from left to right, the blue curves are the intrinsic curves and on the leftmost curve is the lowest temperature and as the temperature increases these curves decrease they scale down these curves are similar and they scale down as temperature increases right from 20 degrees 60 100 140 160 180 similarly the red curves are called the normal curves and is defined by this equation this equation here so as the intrinsic curve is defined here. And the leftmost cur curve is curve of the lowest temperature. And as temperature increases, these curves, similar curves, they scale down. So let's look at the linear region operation. So let's say we start at point A. We have a remnant flux, flux density at this temperature. And we move from point A to point B we see that the flux density decreases, so the mag magnets demagnetize. And if we lower the temperature, we increase the temperature, we go to point C, the magnets demagnetize further. However, since we're in the linear region, we can reverse the operating points, reverse the operation of the motor, go back the same path, and we can return to the original operating point, and the demagnetization is fully reversed. However, if we operate at any point on any nonlinear um, part of the curve, for example, we'll go to point A, point F, right? We're in the linear region, but then we increase the temperature, we we'll go to point E, and then we, we cool the magnet to, for example, 20 degrees, which was on point F, the point F on this curve, it will not, the, the magnet, flux density will not return to point F, even if we cool it back to the temperature of 20 degrees. It will be at a lower point, such as G, for example, and it, when we, if we reduce H to zero, it will return in this path here known as a recoil line. So at, at H zero, the point is not on the original point A the remnant flux density will be lower. And similarly, let's say we are at point D on this 180 degree Celsius curve. We can increase H, be at point C, we can remove H to zero. We will go back to point D, right? The demagnetization is reversed. So go to point C, the magnet is demagnetized, but we can rever reverse the operation and go to point D. However, if we 
go from point B to point E, we enter the nonlinear region, and then if we remove H, reduce it to zero, we return on this recoil path, and we end up with a remnant flux density that's less, okay? So as long as we operate, always operate in the linear region, we could go from different curves, right? Different temperatures, 20 degrees, we could go to 160, 180, right? And we could go back. We cool the magnets, we go back to, to the original operating point. Whenever we go to any nonlinear non region on any curve, and we, we cannot go back in reverse to the, the same path, right? We will return to H0 at a different point. And here, <clears throat> so BR is temperature dependent. It's expressed express in terms of a reference, remnant flux density, multiply the, the value, the expression within the parentheses, and alpha is negative. So as temperature increases, this value exp expressed within the parentheses is less than one, and a value less than one multiplied the reference value will give a smaller value for BR, okay? And a normal curve is expressed as B equals the reference, uh, the remnant flux density plus mu H where mu can be expanded and multiply across H to, so we have these two terms, mu naught H plus mu naught chi H. And the intrinsic curve is defined as J equals the remnant flux density plus mu naught chi h. The nonlinearity of the curves are embedded in this chi term. Okay, so let's go back to MotorCAD. So MotorCAD, we now go to calculation. We set the current to 480 amps. Set the phase advance angle, electrical angle to 45 degrees. The highest short circuit transient usually occurs if the short circuit arises at peak torque and base speed. Set the magnet temperature to 160 degrees for this example and set the armature winding temperature to 165 degrees. The armature winding temperature should be higher than the magnet temperature since the armature windings are the main sources of heat in the motor and drives the temperature rise in the machine. And then on the performance test, we check the sudden short circuit box. The short circuit will be applied to all phases and we are doing this test to calculate the operating point for the current in under the short circuit conditions. So now we select solve electric model and in a few seconds we get the solution and we'll go to graphs, we'll go to DQ axis current versus time and we see that the we're looking at the peak, negative peak of the D axis current, okay, which here is 11, negative 1100. So we go to calculations. We set this to 1100 and set the phase to 90 degrees to get the negative value, all right? And then we uncheck sudden short circuit. And now we select demagnetization. And now we run the demagnetization test. And in a few seconds, we'll get the results, and then we can analyze the results on the table here, out the data. And here shows the reference magnet, magnetic um, flux density value, 1.26 Tesla, at temperature 160 degrees. At, at one, at one six, so 1.26 Tesla is at 20 degrees, and at 160 degrees temperature of the magnet, the remnant flux density is 1.048. The knee point is 0 0.2645 at this 160 degree Celsius curve. And the magnet demagnetization ratio is 0.9488, which means among all the magnets, right, the total volume of the magnets, 94.88% has been demagnetized, not considering the amount, the extent, just at any level, at any extent, Yes or no? Has the magnets been demagnetized by any amount, by any extent? Yes. So 94.8% has been demagnetized. So in terms of individual magnets, L1 are the magnets in the lower level. They have been demagnetized 
by this amount here shown and the L2 magnets are the outer layer closer to the air gap and they have been demagnetized by this amount, right? Again, now the, the remember this is not the extent, not how strongly they have, the magnets have been demagnetized, it's just yes or no has has the magnet been demagnetized by any amount okay so that that this is the the following that has been demagnetized and the effective br is the remnant flux density as a result of the permanent demagnetization right permanent flux loss permanent magnetic flux density loss right so at at, at 160 degrees, right, the remnant flux density is 1.048. But because we entered the nonlinear region, when H is removed, we go along the recall line. As I mentioned, the whenever we enter the nonlinear region, the magnets will be permanently demagnetized. They will, the, the magnets will suffer a permanent magnetic flux density loss, right? And these are the values. Now we can go to the e-magnetics tab to see a visualization of the demagnetization on the magnets. And the legend here shows a maximum remnant flux density 1.048 corresponding to the remnant flux density at 160 degrees when the magnets have not operated in the nonlinear region. Okay, that's there for reference, but these magnets have operated in the nonlinear region and we see that the L2 magnets, magnets closer to the windings over here, closer to the air gap, have been permanent, permanently demagnetized and shows the B field within the magnet pointing in the opposite direction intended um, for it. Opposite direction the magnets were designed to operate in, okay? And we see that the magnetic flux density is non-uniform and the magnets, L1 magnets, further away from the air gap, further away from the windings, the windings which are producing the opposing field, producing the demagnetizing field, right? It does not affect the L, L1 magnets as much as the L2 magnets. We see that the L1 magnets still have its magnetization pointing outwards and the magnetic flux density within these magnets are very uniform except in the sides there's slight variation let's now go to the calculation tab and model the demagnetization effects on back emf and torque so on the performance test select torque we may leave demagnetization checked or unchecked if we leave it checked we will have the demagnetization results available in the output data tab if we uncheck this these results will no longer be available However, this is not necessary to analyze the demagnetization effects on the torque and back EMF, right? So it, let's choose, go to input data, settings, graphs. We choose data points and lines to have this on the, the plots. In calculation, we will choose custom waveform and the drive tab appears when we select this and then whatever waveform we have here we need to clear all points load the waveform you want to choose for this analysis short circuit the magnetization effects on the back emf and our our waveform shown here that we're using for this example the first two cycles are zero current and then the third cycle there's a short circuit normalized short circuit which will be um, multiplying, scaling the value we have here for the peak current, 1100 amps for this short circuit operating point. And th at the end of the third cycle, the two remaining cycles have zero current. So this is the waveform we have. We just now need to run, solve the e-magnetic model. The, we have the results now. The model solved in one minute and 10 seconds, which is actually quick. So to see the results, we go to graphs, terminal voltages, and we can see, we can zoom in, let's see before the short circuit, the voltage is about 244 volts. And then we can go to after the short circuit, 
we see the voltage reduce to 195 volts approximately. This is a 20% reduction in the terminal voltage due, due to the demagnetization effects on the back EMF. Okay, now we can go to calculation. We can go to, again, drive. We can clear these points. Go to load the waveform. Now we're going to see the effects on the torque. So go to your waveform you want to use for this analysis. Here we have it from the tutorial folder. And now in this case, we have normal operation for two cycles. And then a short circuit occurs, a scaled, um, normalized short circuit the, um, waveform, which will multiply, again, the peak current, 1100 amps. And we have phase advance zero degrees. Now we solved electric magnetic model, and let's just wait. It should take perhaps a little more than a minute. So I'll pause here until we get the results. Torque, the e magnetic model solved in just over a minute, and we'll go to now go to graphs. We can see the torque curves. We we'll go to before the short circuit occurred, the peak torque is about 283 newton meters and after the short circuit the peak torque is about 262 newton meters this is a about a 7.42 percent decrease in the torque due to demagnetization so that is all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe to our you opposing youtube channel and subscribe to our blog to see more details about this model and analysis. Contact Bozen Engineering for our consulting services.